for this one, we're going to start talking about taxes. What do taxes do to the market? Okay, so forget about this line for a second, but let's say we have this, this market for compact disks. Okay, here's our demand for compact disks. Here's our supply for compact disks. So before anything happens, there's no taxes in initiated. We're going to have an equilibrium price of the intersection here that's going to be $12. We're going to have an equilibrium quantity of 10. So what that means is we are paying $12 for a CD. The firm is getting $12 for the CD. We are buying 10,000 CDs. Okay, now let's say the government comes in and they institute a tax. Okay, we're going to have a tax. And let's say in this case the tax is $2. Okay, the way we could figure out if you're given a graph like this, what is the amount of the tax? It's the vertical distance, okay, the up and down distance, the vertical distance between the S curve and the S plus the tax curve. So this distance right here is going to be the amount of the tax. Okay, we could have done that here, we could do that here, whatever the vertical distance here, that's how we determine what the tax is. So in this case, the tax, we could have calculated 14 minus 12. 14 minus 12 was the tax, it was $2 for the tax. Okay, so what's going to be the impact on the market? Now what we're trying to figure out here is something called tax incidence. Who's going to bear the burden of the tax? Is the seller going to pay the tax or is the buyer going to pay the tax? Well, let's assume that the government requires the seller to pay the tax to the government, okay? Does that mean that, that the buyer is going to have to, to bear the burden of that tax or does the seller? Well, this graph is going to help us figure that out. So after we've instituted this tax of $2, the new equilibrium is going to be right here, okay? Our new equilibrium is the higher price. The price went up to $13. Okay, and the equilibrium quantity went down to 9. So what this is telling, is us, telling us is originally the buyer, this is originally, the buyer paid $12 for the CD. Now they're paying $13 for the CD. Okay, so the buyer is paying one dollar of the tax. Okay, they originally were paying two, 12, now they're paying 13, so the buyer is paying a dollar of the tax. Now we can look at it on the side of the seller. The seller originally got $12 when they sold the CD. Now the buyer's paying them $13, but out of that $13, they've got to submit to the government a $2 tax. So now they're getting, they're getting $13 from the buyer, but they have to pay that tax of $2, so now they're getting $11. Okay, so they were getting 12, now they're paying, they're, they're receiving 13 from the buyer, but they're paying $2 in the tax, so they're only really receiving $11. So they started at 12, getting, now they're only getting 11 net, so the seller is paying $1 of the tax. Okay. The other thing you're going to have to be able to figure out with this is what's happening to tax revenue. Okay, what's going to happen to the tax revenue? Well, with tax revenue here, now the equilibrium quantity is 9. We're still selling 9, in this case 9,000 CDs per week. So the tax revenue is going to be the new equilibrium quantity, that's the 9,000 Okay, we're selling 9,000 new, excuse me, we're selling 9,000 CDs now. And each CD that they're selling, they're getting $2 in tax. So we're taking 9,000, we're multiplying that by $2, so their tax revenue is going to be the $18,000 per week. 